In Jesus' name we pray. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, from verse 17. The commitment of Ruth, she said, Wherever thou diest, there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, more so, if all death part thee by me. And Ruth told Naomi that wherever you go, I will go. We must understand that Ruth and Opa received the same message, but Ruth persevered. This morning, you are going to open up your mouth wherever you are and tell God, I am in for something. I am in for a shift and nothing can deter me. Can you open up your mouth and pray? The same message, but different response. Ruth said, I will follow on. Upper turn back. Can you open up your mouth and say, God, I am in for something today. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have prayed in Jesus' name, we pray. In Genesis chapter 33 from verse 9, And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. At this point, we are going to lift up our voice and pray against every spirit of complacency and satisfaction with our current state. And we are going to trust God to move us forward according as he has desired in his purposes. Can you open up your mouth and begin to pray? Pray against every spirit of satisfaction. In Jesus' name we pray. The psalmist said in Psalm 110 from verse 3, he said, your people shall be willing in the day of his power. Similarly, in Genesis chapter 28 from verse 20 to 22, we saw that Jacob had an encounter at Bethel. But the response of Jacob to the encounter was that, if you would preserve me and I go and I come back, I will respond. We are going to pray this morning. That as the Lord is placing demands upon our lives, that we are not going to postpone our encounters. We are not going to postpone the demands of God upon our lives this morning. Can you open up your mouth and pray?
In Jesus' name we pray. Second Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17 said, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Can we pray for open heavens over the atmosphere this morning? That right from this opening prayer to the very last item, that the open heavens, that the Lord will rend down his, his presence in our midst. We bring down his presence in our midst. Can you open up your mouth and pray? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, your people are waiting. Your people are prepared this morning. We are praying and asking that as we go on for this impact, we pray and ask that your spirit will be with us. And the desired plane of glory that you want us to be this morning, you will take us there in the name of Jesus. As we continue, Lord, we pray you will continue with us. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In part, from glory to glory, you are welcome in Jesus' name. This time for praise and worship. Praise and worship. While we are waiting for that, make sure you are seated at where you are supposed to sit. You can see banners that are there. Sit according to the banners that are displayed before us. Those who are supposed to lead us in praise and worship, please, we're expecting you now. On, don't on again. Give, her, give, her, give them the other one. So the one, two, three. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Please let's rise to our feet as we've been in the mood of worship. <laughs> Take the stage, Lord. And have your way. I'm just your vessel. Nothing, Nothing more. more. When, when you're, you're done, done, please take the glory. glory. 
I'm, I'm satisfied, satisfied just to see you glorified. Please take the stage, Lord. Take the stage, Lord. Take the stage, Lord. Oh, we'll have your way, Lord. And nothing more, Lord. Your glory, Please Lord. take your glory. I'm satisfied, Lord. I'm satisfied. Oh, just, just to see you, glory. Glorified. Oh, Lord, take the stage, Lord. Oh, take the stage, Lord. And have your way. And have your way, Lord. Please say you could glory. 
desert above all the gods we lay our crown and worship you I said oh be lifted above above all the gods we lay From glory to glory, the Lord is taking us higher this morning in Jesus' name. This time for a congregational song. Look at page three of your program sheet. Arise, O youth of God. Arise, O youth of God. Have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the king of kings. Arise, O youth of God, his kingdom tarries long, bring in the day of joy and peace, and end the night of wrong. Arise, O youth of God, the church for you doth wait. Her strength shall make your spirit strong, her service make you great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod, be loyal to the King of Kings. March on, O youth of God. Arise, arise, the Master calls for thee. Arise, O youth of God. March on to victory.
Please get seated. This time for workshop. We want all our workshop teachers to go to their various classes now. And uh, this is the, these are the topics we are going to discuss this morning in our various classes. For DLSO, junior youths and junior secondary school students, laying a strong foundation for a glorious future. Laying a strong foundation for a glorious future. Senior youth and senior secondary school students, the topic is activating and sustaining scriptural principles for a glorious future. Activating and sustaining scriptural principles for a glorious future. Vocational and ex-students, the topic is reawakening the dormant glory within you. Reawakening the dormant glory within you teachers and youth workers. The topic is unleashing youth creativity for excelling glory. Unleashing youth creativity for excelling glory. DLCF, coppers, postgraduate students and staff. The topic is Paul, living exceptionally for internal glory. Paul, Living exceptionally for internal glory. Undergraduate students, the topic is Moses, the short road to greater glory. Moses, the short road to greater glory. Young professionals, young professionals, the topic is radiating glo God's glory through professional excellence. Radiating God's glory through professional excellence. We expect our teachers to start immediately. Teachers, you can now start. It is time for our DLSO Impact Academy workshop for this month's impact. And this particular one is for junior youths. Our topic is laying a strong foundation for a glorious future. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you because we know the thoughts that you think towards us and it is to have a glorious future. I pray you open our eyes to see how to lay a strong foundation for that future today. And by your grace, we shall go ahead and obey your word, and we shall have the glorious future that we desire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, for the junior youths, our topic this time is laying a strong foundation for a glorious future. Everybody wants a glorious future. But if you are going to have that glorious future that you desire, you must lay a strong foundation today. And that's why we are here to look at this workshop. And by the grace of God, the Lord will open your eyes to see what you are to do. And you will be a doer of the word in Jesus' name. Let's go to the master builder himself to learn how to lay a strong foundation. In the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 47 to 49 in the words of our lord jesus let's see how to lay a strong foundation for our glorious future luke chapter 6 verse 47 it says whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them i will show you to whom he is like he is like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 49, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. 
The same thing we see in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, we're reading from verse 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. From our text, we get to know that we are all builders. Everybody is building one way or the other. But it is how you build that matters. Jesus says some people are wise builders, while some people are foolish builders. According to Gordon B. Hinckley, you can't build a great building on a weak foundation. You must have a solid foundation if you are going to have a strong superstructure. Superstructure is what you build on that foundation. And here, the Lord Jesus is telling us, it is not just what you build on it that matters, but it is our foundation, the strength of the foundation that will determine how glorious your future is going to be. What is a foundation? A foundation is the basis on which something is grounded. And if that foundation is weak, eventually that thing will come crashing down. But if the foundation is strong, you can build on it something great and mighty, and it will withstand the test of time. I pray the foundation of your life will be strong in Jesus' mighty name. God's word is the firm foundation for an excelling life. You build on the word of God, you excel in life. Our character, values, and beliefs must come from the word of God if we are going to have a glorious future. Not just when we talk about a glorious future, we are not just talking about in this world. We are also talking about our future in eternity. When you hold on to the word of God, Jesus said in our text, that if you are going to have a glorious future, you must not just be the hearer of the word alone. You must be a doer. It is the person that hears the word and that does the word. That is a wise builder. And that person will have a strong foundation in order to have a glorious future. The wise builders, they are people that have built their house, talking about their lives, talking about their future on rock-solid foundations, while the foolish ones, they have built on shallow ground. When the winds blow, when the rains come, when the flood comes, the house of the wise builders will stand firm, while those of the foolish builders will come crashing down. I want you to know that at this stage that you are, as junior youths, you are at a very critical stage because this is the stage at which you are laying the foundation for your future. If you lay a weak foundation now, your future is going to be weak. But if you lay a strong foundation, I'm telling you, your future will be glorious. You must not joke with what you are doing now. Don't believe you can waste time, you can play around because you are still young. No, you are building the foundation for your future already. You must be serious with it. You must follow the, the words of the master builder so that in future you will have success and not failure. We are going to look at this workshop in three aspects. Number one, importance of laying a strong foundation for a glorious future. Why is it important? And the second part is introduction to our strong foundation for a glorious future. And point three is initiating structures on the strong foundation for a glorious future. Without wasting time, let's look at our first part, importance of laying a strong foundation for a glorious future. Why is it important for you to lay that foundation today that is strong? Let's look at the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 48. 
where we read the other time, let's follow the words of our Lord Jesus Christ because he's the wise master builder. If you want to build, listen to Jesus. If you want to build something that will last, listen to Jesus. Luke chapter 6 verse 48 says, He is like a man which built a house and digged deep. This is a wise builder. It says, the person will dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. We can see the importance of laying a strong foundation for a glorious future here. It says that the flood will come. It says the winds will blow. It says that the stream will also beat upon it to test it. And so you will know later in life whether you have laid a strong foundation today or not. One of the, re one of the major reasons why a young person needs to lay a strong foundation in his life is because there will be a time when the flood of life, the rain of life, will arise to shake our lives. The only thing that will save you is if you build a strong foundation while you were young. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3. We are going to consider there a popular story that I want to believe most of us know. Daniel chapter 3, we can see how the foundation of the lives of some young people was shaken. Daniel 3.11. Here, Nebuchadnezzar is talking and he commanded everybody to bow down to his idol. And in verse 11, he says, And whoso faileth, whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Verse 12, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Some people came to report them now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They brought their report to the king. King, everybody is bowing down, except some three recalcitrant young people. You have promoted them. You have, you have made them great, but they are not obeying you. It was a time of crisis for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in verse 13, we're told that the king was very angry. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up now? If ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dosima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? And that is Nebuchadnezzar challenging the Almighty God. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. We can see here that the three Hebrew children, they would have been scared by the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. If not that they laid a solid foundation in their relationship with God. They were not the only ones brought from the, the land of Israel. Maybe the others without strong foundation have all bowed down because of the threat of the king. But they stood. They faced the king. They said, no, we are not afraid of your fire. Our foundation is strong. It can withstand your fire. And we can see that at the end of the day, they were able to stand the test of fire. Laying a strong foundation in God is important for some reasons. Number one, it takes away the fear of the storms of life from us, 
like the three Hebrew children. When you lay a strong foundation, you will not be afraid. Look at Daniel. He was thrown into the lion's den. He survived. These three Hebrew children were thrown into the fire, and they were able to stand the test of time. If you don't have a strong foundation, you will just capitulate. Look at verse uh, number two. It makes the dangerous storms harmless to us. Like I told you, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. But the lions became his friend. They just played with him all night. Maybe he even told the lions to, to come together and he used them as a mattress, you know, that night. And in the morning when the king came, he said, My God, whom I serve, has sent his angel and has delivered me from your lions, O king. When you have a strong foundation, the Lord will always send his angels to deliver you from the storms of life and you will not be swallowed in Jesus' mighty name. So apart from that, number three, you will always overcome the storms of life when you have a strong foundation. You see some people, nothing moves them. They just move from victory to victory. They overcome challenges and obstacles. It's because they have laid a strong foundation. You also laid, lay a strong foundation today in Jesus' name. And lastly, you will inherit eternal life with God after a glorious life on earth. If you read Revelation 21 verse 7, the Bible says that he that overcometh shall inherit all things. When you overcome, when you lay a good foundation, you will see that at the end of the day, you will spend your eternity with God. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, we can see what the Bible says there. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The foundation that God lays is very sure. That's why if you are a child of God, your foundation is sure, is unshakable in Jesus. And you need a strong foundation because today the world is full of evil, is full of wickedness, is full of sins and compromise. Only youths that are strong in the Lord, like the Bible said in the book of Daniel 11:32, that those who know their God, they will be strong. They will do exploit. Only youths who know God will be able to stand the test of time and overcome. I pray you will be one of them from today in the name of Jesus. We go to point two, introduction to our strong foundation for a glorious future. I want to introduce you to the person that is your strong foundation. What is that strong, or who is that strong foundation that you need for your glorious future? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. When you hear the words of Jesus and you pay attention, and you obey and practice the word, you are a wise person. That's how to know the person that is wise from the person that is not wise. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Let's see what the Bible says there. Introduction to our strong foundation for a glorious future. First Corinthians 3, 11. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is only one foundation that is sure for you today and in the future. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. You can see that in the book of Luke chapter 6, 47 and 48 where we read, Jesus told us that the wise builder is the person that hears the word and that obeys the word of God. And that is the person that is laying a strong foundation. And we, had, we were told in John chapter 1, that Jesus is the word personified. And so he is the sure foundation for you. No other foundation is firm like the foundation of Jesus. And to have a glorious future on earth and in eternity, therefore, you must lay the foundation today by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you give your life and your heart to Jesus, and you lay the strong foundation, you can build on it and nothing will shake you. 
because Jesus is your surest foundation in life. He's the one who will be directing your decisions in life, and you can never miss your way. Unfortunately, a lot of young people today, they follow role models of the world. They follow popular singers in the world, or people on the social media, or, or people popular in sports. They follow what they say and what they do. No, they are not the best role models for you. Your best role model is Jesus. Just follow Jesus. Just listen to Jesus. Just do what you see Jesus do. That is the surest foundation for your life, that your building will not collapse. And today, you will repent. You will accept Jesus as your Lord, and your building, the building of your life, will never sink in Jesus' name. Before we leave that point, Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Before we leave point 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Amen. The Bible says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom. You see, in Jesus, we have all the treasures that we need in our life and in eternity. You will have Jesus in your life in Jesus' name. And you will have all the treasures that God has prepared for you from the foundation of the world. We go to our last point, Luke chapter 6, verse 47. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. As we look at initiating structures on the strong foundation for a glorious future. How do we initiate structures on the strong foundation for a glorious future? Luke chapter 6, verse 47. Luke 6, 47 says, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48, he is like a man which built a an house and dig deep. Look at what Jesus is saying about a wise builder. He says, number one, the person has to come to him. Have you come to Jesus? Have you given your life to Jesus? Are you a friend of Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Are you working with Jesus? Or you are working with sinners? He says, you come to me. Do you want to build a strong foundation? Come to me. Number two, hear my sayings. Are you listening now? Have you put your phone aside? Do you read your Bible? Do you pay attention to the word of God when you come to church or every other place? He says, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and the final one is doing them. You must make sure that you are a doer. Because it's not the hearer of the word that is blessed, but is a doer of the word. Praise the Lord. After laying a strong foundation in Christ, then you are ready to build. How do you build on it? You need to follow some steps. Number one, vision. You need to build on that foundation, vision. You must build with vision. Vision is a picture of the future that you desire. That is vision. You must know where you are going. You must have a clear picture of what you want to achieve in life within a specific period. You can be a child of God. You can be born again. If you don't have vision, you will not achieve much. In fact, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. A lot of things will be affected if you don't have vision for your life. Number two, believe. Apart from having vision, you must build on that foundation. A lot of faith. You must build with faith. You must believe without a shadow of doubt that you can do it. You are what you say. You are what you believe. You must believe that you will succeed. You must have confidence in the God of success who will help you to get what you want. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to, to believe, to, to please God. Today, we have a lot of negativity in our society. We have negativity on the social media, in books, even from your friends. Stay away from a negative env environment. Stay away from people that want to influence you in a negative way. Stay away from people that make you doubt yourself. 
make sure you surround yourself with things that remind you that you can. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You must make sure you keep that and you keep on reminding yourself that you can, that you will, and that you will succeed. And by the grace of God, your profiting will appear to all in Jesus' name. Apart from vision and belief, you must have responsibility. That's number three. You must realize that you have things to do. You must play your own part. You must take responsibility for your future. Somebody said, if it has to be, it is up to me. Can you say that? If it has to be, it is up to me. Yes, if it has to be, it is up to you. You cannot just sit down and expect God to read your books for you. You don't expect God to go for a group discussion for you and come and tell you what your friends said at the group discussion. Make sure that you, you play your part. You have a responsibility to also fulfill. Number four, affirmation. Make sure that you form the habit of saying positive things about yourself, about your future, out loud. Don't keep it within you. Say it. You open your mouth and you say it. Because the Bible says that whatever you say with your mouth is what the Lord will do for you. It says that you should speak, you know, and I will confirm it. So make sure you say positive things to yourself so that the Lord can confirm it. Speak in the present tense. Say, I am fit. I am strong. Say, I have a clear mind. Say, I can do it. Say, I am greater than my challenges. And as you continue to say it, you will see all these things coming to pass in your life. You must build self-confidence. You must believe in yourself. You must practice positive self-talk. When you are talking to yourself, when you are thinking, make sure that your thoughts are creating the future that you desire. So practice affirmation. The next thing is commitment. Make a firm commitment to your actions. You must decide to take whatever step you need to take in order to achieve your goals. And then the next one, set smart goals. What do we mean by smart goals? We mean that your goals must be specific. Whatever you want to achieve, you spell it out. It must be measurable. It must be attainable. It must be realistic and time-bound. That is smart. Make it specific. By this time next year, I will have written my exam, and I want to have A's in all my subjects. Make sure you are specific what you want, and you put time. Make sure the goal is measurable, is attainable, not that you are in GS1, and you are saying by this time next year, you want to be a proud owner of a Venza. That is not attainable at this point, and that's not what you need at this point. You must be realistic, and you must make sure the goal is time-bound. The next one is planning and action. Plan and take action. You know, if you fail to plan, it means that you have planned to fail. So make sure you break down the plan into basic steps. Take a step or two each day. Remind yourself that each step is bringing you closer to your goal. Perform each act to the best of your ability with faith, determination, and purpose to reach your goal and be consistent. Next one is persistence. Do not give up until you have achieved what you desire. We heard about Thomas Edison. The fact that he did not give up in his quest to invent the light bulb, even though he failed 10,000 times, he continued to do it over and over. That is persistence. You must see every failure as a stepping stone to your success. The next one is time management. Make sure you manage your time wisely so that you can get the best from your day. You can use a daily planner. Then you need good study habits. Make sure that you are always prepared for class, you attend class, and you do your assignments and find time to read and to study your books 
and do your homework for the next day. Build LD relationship. That's the next one. You need friends and family around you to encourage you. Surround yourself with positive influencers. Then practice self-discipline. You need to have self-control and self-awareness to overcome temptations and distractions. Stay committed to your goal. And finally, trust in the plan of God. Trust in God's sovereignty, God's provision for you. Make sure you put your, your trust in God. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will bring your desires to pass. And by the grace of God, your future will be glorious. In Jesus' name, shall we pray. Father, we thank you for all the steps you have shown us to get to a glorious future. Give us the grace to be doers of the world. Give us the strength to push through every obstacle on our way. Help us put you first. As many here, as they're surrendering their hearts to you, Father, take over their lives. Give them the strength and the power to overcome in life. And by the grace of God, they will lay solid foundation today and they will have a glorious future. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.
sister there. Ask your question. Praise the Lord. Good morning, sirs. Mm, my question this morning is, when we were being taught about glory, our topic was about dominant glory. So when our uh, teacher was teaching, he saw it something about uh, mentorship. He talked about us going to meet our mentors if we have issues. And my question here is, in a society where you already have we like a lack of self-awareness in Christ, your personal self-awareness, you, you lack self-awareness, and the condition of the country is not favoring you. We, how, what kind of mentors, what kind of people would you meet so that they will help you in, in, in your general life? In how for you to make success in your general life. Praise Thank the you. Lord. Thank you very much, Prof. Professor Nadi will take that question. The second person is the student from Deeper Life High School. Good morning, sirs. I am by name Master Ono Franklin. My question is when they were teaching us in SS this morning. They talked about developing and constantly exercising your brain. So uh, my question is, like, those men that are, like, all these old men that are no longer going to school now, apart from those that are still teaching, how are they still exercising their brain? Thanks. Mr. Ifebude Banabas, you take that question. Prof, over to you, sir. Yes, sir. We thank God for that first question. The utmost we are prevailing is one of adversity. And then you are still required to consult with mentors. How are you going to do it in the prevailing circumstances? That's the question asked. And we want to make it clear that we who are Christians, or at least who subscribe to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ do not walk by what we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 uh, let me read verse 7 uh, it says for we walk by faith not by sight and if you read the preceding verses you will see discussing conditions that are difficult but nevertheless we survive in those circumstances also the bible makes it clear in this same second corinthians chapter 12 i am reading from verse let me just go to verse 9 stretch for want of time and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We rely on the power of Christ and not allow prevailing circumstances to constitute a setback to us and limit our forward movement. You will remember the book by scholar that when the going gets tough, what does the tough do? The tough gets going. All that is required is apply more strength. And even in such circumstances, who are going to be mentors? Mentors are those who themselves have hazarded, have waded through these difficult times. People who are thriving, people who are remaining afloat in spite of the difficulties that are prevailing. So as we look around, there are still mentors. And to God be the glory for those of us who belong to this kind of uh, community, there will always be people to look up to who have waded through difficult circumstances, who are still wading through it, Looking up to such people, you'll be able to get the way to continue to advance, relying on the Lord and not walking by sight, rather walking by faith. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. 
I will go to question number two now. And uh, Mr. Barnabas, if everybody will take that question for us. Thank you very much. So Mr. Uh, Master Ono Franklin asked about our old people exercising their brain. And um, I think maybe he's already thinking about old age. But I'm going to use an example for our convener, our father in the Lord. I believe when it comes to terms of age, that is much more advanced ahead. He's much more advanced than most of us here. But how is he exercising his brain? That's what we're going to ask. So one thing, one way to exercise our brain is to continue learning. And we know learning does not end our life. They say when you, when you stop learning, you, you, you do what? You start dying. So once you keep learning, your brain will keep developing. And how do you learn? You read. Just like our Father in the Lord, you read. He studies. You mentor the young ones. The young ones will come up to replace them in the, after they are gone. I also see he teaches. So by doing all these exercises, the older people, the, those are advanced in age. See, that's a way of them exercising their brain. So if you're thinking on how you keep exercising your brain when you grow older, you just keep learning, you keep teaching others, you keep reading, you keep studying, you mentor other people, and your brain will never be dead. And I pray God will help you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for that wonderful answer. We take the third question now. My brother, who is in the front now, yes. Good morning, sir. Um, from the young professionals. My question is this. We studied radiating God's glory through professional excellence. My first question is this. How do you handle a boss who sees your professional excellence as a threat to his own position? That's one. Two, if in a professional examination you are required to pass, maybe you're already working and you need to pass certain exams to be promoted, then in the exam, the highest ranking officer in that exam volunteers to assist to you know, supply uh, answers, and he's the one that's supposed to take care of the exam to make sure that it goes on well. And uh, there is no specification as to whether or not you should receive assistance from them. And it's coming from such person who is the highest ranking. Do you, as a Christian, receive such assistance from them? Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, Professor Nadi is going to take that question for us. Number two, my brother. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sorry. Uh, Go on. Uh, according to the scriptures, the scripture is filled of um, real life events and stories of men who have worked this world and become successful. So my own question will be directed to the um, panelists. If they can give us real life situation about their own life, how they started, the hurdles they overcame, and how they got to the goals. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Chiwendo Ote. You'll take that question. Then, the next person. Good, afternoon. Good morning, sir. By the grace of God, I'm Bob Benjamin Gospel. So why the coordinator of my Bible study was going through the Bible study, he said something while talking about environmental righteousness. And he was like, when you will know the difference between environmental righteousness, if you as a believer in quotes can differentiate if what you claim to have is environmental righteousness or conviction is when you leave that environment of believers and then you go to a place where go you ahead to, with your question just ask the question okay yes. and then you go to where um, a place where there are no believers so my question is can that be considered as a proper yardstick to determine if someone does not have conviction? Because the Bible says that we should not despise the garden of believers. And for him to give that, you know, that um, 
that commandment or that instruction, I think he knows that, okay, as Christians, he, we can't really survive or we can't really stand, you know, for long without um, 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 fellowship of brethren. So I don't know if I'm right, so I don't know. If Thank you very is. much. Mr. Barnabas, today you will take the, quest, the, the last question. I will start from Professor Nadi. We had a question concerning a circumstance in which you have a boss uh, who has a mentality of rivalry, a rivalrous attitude towards you. The faster you grow, the higher you come, the more threatened and the more comfortable he becomes. How do you handle such a situation? Very straightforward. A person who sees you from the standpoint of a rival, a rival, will do everything to limit you. Uh, there is what is called game theory. In, in a game, take a typical football game. One person will win and one person will surely lose. There are times it comes up to a draw, and that's why you have league tables where they now aggregate the points. So a situation like that has become one of game theory in which your boss is saying that if you are coming up, he's losing and you are winning. And what is he going to try to do? He will try to ensure that he remains winning. And what will be his approach to remaining the winner? He is to constitute obstacles and obstructions for you so that you get slowed down, set back, or stagnated altogether. Avoid such a person. Just decide yourself particular boundaries you are not going to cross with him. That's what you have to do in your own professional interest. The other aspect of your question is you are in for a professional examination or any examination for that matter, and it's the people who are supposed to be supervising, enforcing the examination regulations that are the ones now who are proposing to compromise and to involve you in that compromising examination regulation. What do you do? Relate to your conscience. Can you do that in good conscience? If you refer to the Bible in Romans chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 15. The Bible says, We show the work of the Lord written in their hearts, their conscience. Remember the role of the conscience. The conscience is giving you to provide a kind of internal policeman for you. It says, Their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, which is still your conscience, they may while accusing or else excusing. Just pay attention to the keywords conscience, excusing, accusing. If you say, okay, since he's my boss, he's supposed to be the invigilator, so to speak, and he's uh, the one offering that we compromise, no harm. You cannot do that in good conscience. And if I had condemned us, say the Bible in First John chapter 3 from verse 20, 21, if I had condemned us, what happens? The Bible says that God is greater. You will face greater condemnation from God. Think of the situation of Joseph, who confronted the challenge or the temptation created by Potiphar's wife. It's equivalent to one in which the boss is the one saying, it doesn't matter. Regulations don't matter. Let's just do this thing. What did Joseph do? Joseph fled. He saw it as a matter of life and death, and he fled. So you don't agree with that kind of a person. Do not follow the multitude. Whether that multitude is led by the chief executive or by the lowest person in that place, do not follow any multitude to commit iniquity, to do what is contrary to what you know to be examination regulations. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much, Prof. Thank you, the panelists. This is how far we can go with the question this morning. Those who came out to ask questions, please, you can meet them while they go out from this place. Uh, meet them there so that they can provide answer to your questions. God bless you. Thank you very much for coming.
From glory to glory. From glory to glory. You are here for impactation today. You are here for transformation today. And you are already here for greater blessing today in Jesus' name. This is time for priorities. And we are going to have it in two sessions. Among us today, we have talented, intelligent, and amazing teenagers, campus students, club members, and young adults who have already prepared and are ready to showcase their gifts, their skills, and their resourcefulness. And it's all meant to bless you and to bless me. Tell yourself, I'm going to be blessed today. Tell the person sitting by your side, you are going to be blessed today. And that blessing will be eternal, will be forever, and will produce outstanding results in your life in Jesus' name. Their presentation includes spoken words, impact story, book review, drama, and lots more. Please, I want you to listen carefully so that you will receive the whole blessing that the Lord has for you. We call them one by one, and they have been detailed to take to their script, to their preparation, and then to do not spend more than the time allocated for each and individual of them. The first person I'm calling today, she is prepared and ready to deliver a spoken word tied to at pudging for his glory. Join me as we welcome Sister Blessing Chino Yellum. Please take the stage now. From glory to glory. I say from glory to glory. My name is Sister Chino Yellum Blessing. I am here to perform a spoken word presentation titled Heart Purging for a Glory to Glory Journey. Listen and be blessed. From glory to glory, a journey desired by all. From glory to glory, a journey endowed by God alone. But how then can you move from glory to glory when your heart is filled with all sorts of defilement and impurity? When your heart is laden with sin and evil? Tell me, how then can you move from glory to glory? Know this, if there must be a glorious journey, then there must be a heart purging. If glory must be attained, then the atomic nature must be detached. Because retaining the atomic Demic nature will make you a name of God's glory. Now tell me, how then can you embark on a glorious journey when your life is short of his glory? Because the nature of God is lacking in your heart. In your heart, there is a depravity that has caused a deformity, resulting to a dysfunctionality, robbing you of the normality of living for God's glory. Now tell me, how will you move from glory to glory? If you must move from glory to glory if you must embark on a glorious journey then you must open up your heart for Jesus to step in and make it a permanent residence listen when your heart is parched the glory of God is infused within you plunging you into a victorious living when your heart is parched the glory of God rises upon you making you to arise and shine in the light of God and now with a heart fixed on the Lord and with an open face beholding his glory you are changed to the same image from glory to glory and now you are empowered to live a glorious life so let us arise all youth of God and march on from glory to glory in part thank you in part please clap your hand clap your hand Let's celebrate him, I mean, celebrate her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have in our midst another talented child of God. She is Sister Itube Abasi, a team Sunday. 
She has a spoken word to give, tied to the hard most glorious. Let's clap her hand as she delivers. As you listen to this poem, let it be my matters. Calculate all the risks you are yet to take. As you listen to this poem, let it be a verb, take reasonable action. Let it be an adjective, be describe yourself. My name is Utuba Abasi, and the title of my performance is The Almost Glorious. Almost is the whisper that says not yet. A hint of what could be but isn't met is the echo of dreams still left in flight. A reminder that something isn't quite right. I say almost is the whisper of something that says not yet. A hint of what could be but isn't met is the echo of dreams still in flight. The reminder that something isn't quite right. Almost is the alarm that snoozes your dream, gives you a life without a team, an image like a Ponzi scheme. See, almost is the excuse that makes you foolish and confused. Almost is the red flag that calls productivity your ex. It's the court that divorces great result. Almost, I say almost is the inner train that leads to failure. Almost is the negative trend that leads to a quick end. It is the small gap between intention and action. Almost is the gap between potentials and productivity. It is the line that is drawn between your day one and one day. I could go on and on. I mean, I could go on and on or what almost means. Almost comes in different forms. Number one. I almost gave my life to Christ, but every day I keep procrastinating and sin. Almost had a consistent prayer life, Bible study life, but my phone calls, my social media crews has kept me in custody. Almost fulfilled purpose, but I'm too poor in mind. Almost got financially free, but constantly borrowing from old pay and old cash and pumping and play bed Niger has left me in Zappa. Almost became a global influencer, but you see, I think where I come from is too local. I almost made sense, but every time I look at myself, my low esteem is so small. Almost is the fence that has kept me for so long. But hear this. You realize that the Bible says, and they that know their God, do you know your God? The God that makes you, do you know that the master of the universe makes you a masterpiece? Or do you know you don't need to be called capable because Jehovah is able? Do you understand that when he created you, he gave you the unction to function? So do not let almost be the bridge you are yet to cross. Do you understand that Jehovah and Yeza has your backing? So hush the inner critics backing. Do you understand? You do not need to settle for less because God does not need a go fund you account to fund your dreams. I say you do not need to settle for less because God does not need a go fund you account to fund your dream. So every day wake up. I want you to look at life and make sense today. I say today and from henceforth. Today and from henceforth. Let this be known to you. Don't live your life as a guest. Don't be a visitor in your own life. And don't just act based on a guest. Make up your mind. Make the pact with the pastor and other young people and press forward from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Thank you. Because you will impact. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Etibe. We have in our midst again another intelligent speaker. Her name is Joy Abigail Ude. She's a woman. She's going to render a spoken word tied to her have a champion. Welcome her with a clap of hand. Who am I? I am a champion. Whenever you hear me saying, who am I? You say, I am a champion, okay? I will conquer what has not been conquered. Defeat will not be my creed. I will believe what others have doubted. I will always endeavor the prestige, honor, and respect of my family. I have trained my mind that my body will follow. Who am I? I will acknowledge the fact that my opponent does not expect me to win. But I will not surrender. 
Greatness should not be in my heart. I will look at my comrades, to those who have brought me to this world, and those who have trained me, and I will draw strength from them. Who am I? I will gladly go out into the field of battle, and I will move, groove, and do everything I can do. I will reach my field of battle by every right means at my disposal. And when I get there, I will run violently. I will rip the earth from my enemy and be bleeding in the ground because they cannot stop me. Who am I? To my sides, I have comrades. Comrades who have been with me through thick and thin, through sacrifices, blood, sweat, and tears. Never will I let them fall. Never will I let them down. And I'll never leave an opponent behind because my enemies does not know my heart. Who am I? No one will deny me. No one will defy me. And no one will tell me who and what I am I can be. Believe will change my world. It has moved continents, countries, and put man on the moon and to carry me through this battle. Who am I? Defeat, retreat, those are not in my world. I do not understand those definitions. I do not care when things go wrong. I do not understand mistakes, but I do understand this. I understand victory and I understand never surrendering. No matter how bad things go, my heart and my mind will carry my body when my limbs are too weak. Who am I? Today will be that day. Not tomorrow, not next week. Right now, right here in your house and in your home. Who am I? History will remember me. And I will not have to worry myself about it being kind. I will defend myself. I will write my own praises. And no one will tell me who I was I can and cannot be. Who am I? The grace of the Lord upon my life will keep on taking me from glory to glory. And no matter what the enemy tries, it will never stop me. I will never go home, not without giving everything that I've got. Because who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Thank you. Please clap your hand for her. Who are you? Who are you? We are indeed champions. Next is Sister Deborah Ehare Jimmy. She's going to speak with the title Phineas. It is a spoken word. Champions don't bow because when you bow, you will burn. Phineas, a call for dauntless use. His zeal was invisible, his passion nowhere to be seen. Who sits at his in Zion, who stands aloof with a burning roof? They sinned against God and judgment descended, yet this young man was unperturbed. Who puts fire in his bosom and expects to not get burnt? The wrath of God was unleashed upon a sinful generation, and everyone mourns in agony, yet no one could speak up against the evil he was about to do. And then he showed up. As a son born in due time, Phineas, the one who stands for his God and fights a just battle, he could not stand sin because the God he carries cannot. Who stays mute when sin reigns? Certainly not Phineas. His zeal matched his conviction and such heart earned him a place in the honors of his fathers. He was given a covenant, a covenant of peace and prosperity for generations to come. This is what you get when you dare to stand apart. Listen, the world is filled with corruption. We have waited for the likes of Phineas to call corrupt men to order, casting down the wheels of their God and shutting down territories. Oh, youths of God, arise and be a voice in the care. Wake up and be a lily in the mire. Arise and bring your God down to hell. For he who drives when just men keep silent. Phineas stood out. He stood when it mattered. You should do the same. For the father seeketh one to stand at the gap for a dying world. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The last in this session is drama and is going to be performed by youth serving their nation, youth serving Christ. They are cop members team. They have the drama title, The Glorious Beagle. The floor is yours. Follow, follow, follow. Good morning, no IC members. Good morning, gentlemen, co members. Morning, Welcome you to NYC orientation camp in Ugu State. I am your state coordinator. Is that okay? Yes, Whatever I say, you say no options. Is that clear? Yes, Good. 
Now, as you may know, the OIC scheme aims to promote your national unity. Our camp values diversity and promote harmony. Yeah. Now, listen, regarding religious diversity, while we you encourage your religious practice and faith in this camp, please do ensure that you do not in any way try to influence anyone negatively with your religion. Is that clear? I will call on the camp RSM to let you know the symbols of the various big groups you will hear in this camp. RSM. Welcome to the Rotation Camp. In this camp, we have rules and regulation. I will have some big goals. The first big goal is for the drill. The second big goal is for the meal. Then the last big goal is for the alarm. Oh, yeah, to move, 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 move. Oh, Christopher! Oh, Clarice! How are you? Everyone you're seeing, Cam, is oh, so nice to see that's you. That's great, that's great. Oh, Finally, I'll be able to have an evangelism partner in Cam. This is so amazing. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, God. I'm not in for oh, that, Mr. please. Bay, how are you now? How are you? How are hey, you? Mr. Bay, you say you're not interested. I'm not interested, please. I'm Mr. not interested. Bay, have you forgotten about oh. Daniel? Or you forgotten about Esther? They were like core members in strength and they served the Lord. Christabel, this is an opportunity to get your life serious with God because you don't know if the rapture will take place here. What's my name? Oh, Christabel. Please look for Esther, just like the way you said, for your evangelism work. I'm not in for that. Please, please, let me enjoy my life. I want to enjoy this life. Please. Anyways, we have prayers, and I want to invite you for it. Not to come. We'll come. She likes church, 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 church. Every time. 